In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a double bowl bathroom vanity and make all the plumbing connections. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. I went ahead and installed the light above the vanity because that's gonna be easier to do before the vanity is installed because I can get a step ladder directly under the light. So I just hooked up the grounds and then the white to the white and the black to the black using wire nuts and then secured it to the wall using the mounting bracket then after it was secured I simply just put on the globes and light bulbs afterwards and it was a simple quick install so I recommend you doing that if you decide to install a vanity beforehand. Now that I got the light installed, I need to set the double sink vanity in the center of the light so everything lines up perfectly so I'm going to go ahead and dry fit the vanity into place. <laughs> In order to get the center of the vanity, I'm just going to take a four foot level and place it center of that light I just installed and just plumb down and make a mark on the wall in order to center up the vanity. I now just got to find the center of the vanity and line that up with the mark I just made on the wall. This is the center mark of the vanity and this is the center mark on the wall where I want to line it up. As you can see, I got to shift the vanity down this way just a little bit. That looks pretty darn close. Now that I had the vanity sitting up against the water pipes to where it's going to be installed, I'm going to open up these doors and then I'm going to mark in the bottom of this vanity where the water lines in the back are going to come up through and draw out a hole for them. I'm just going to take a speed square and lay it square against the back of the vanity and about the center of that water line. And then I'm going to mark it down here on the vanity and then do the same to the water line over here. Yeah. In order to get the distance in which I got to go inside the vanity to draw out the hole, I'm just going to measure right off the wall and we got two and three quarter to the center of the pipe. So now I need to mark it in the vanity and drill it out. I just pulled the vanity off from the wall and this is the back side of the vanity. And I'm going to go to those marks that I made from the other side and I'm going to come an inch and three quarter because by the time I add this thickness to it, it's going to give me the distance I want. Then I'm going to use the square to get the distance off the back of the wall here. And then I got a three quarter inch drill bit. And this is going to give me a little play around this pipe so I have a little bit of room for error. And I have this on a impact driver because it's short and will fit inside the cabinet here. We're just going to drill that out. And do that to each water line. This is the vanity top that's for that vanity. As you can see, it's a double bowl, of course. And what I'm gonna do is get the measurements off the side and get the center of the drain in the center of these water line holes so I can transcribe them onto the vanity, particularly the shelves inside of those cabinets so I can pre-drill them for the drain and water lines. Here's where the drain's gonna go down through. So I gotta measure off this side panel, and I know this panel is a one inch thick panel. So I'm gonna measure over 14 and seven eighths to give me my measurement over. And then coming off the back here, I know I'm at three and a quarter, and I'm at 10 inches. So I gotta cut a hole here, and I gotta cut a hole right here in order to get our water line through to hook down below in our drain line. I'm now going to use an inch and a half hole saw to drill out for these water lines and the drain. I'm now going to address the drain lines and the water lines before I set this vanity into place. And some things we'll need before we get started is PVC cement, primer, a sawzall of some kind or some way, whatever way you use to cut PVC pipe. And I got a little bit of emery cloth and I got some adapters that's gonna be a place for the P-traps to hook into on the drain lines. This is the water faucet I'm installing on the vanity and it has plenty of length. So I know I just need to cut this water line about 10 inches up off the tile in order to give me plenty of room to hook these water lines to. I'm just gonna measure right up off the tile about 10 inches and you wanna check whatever water lines you got and whatever faucet you got because it may be a little different. You may need to keep these taller or shorter. It all depends. I'm now gonna take my pipe cutter and cut right on that 10 inch mark. 
And to avoid dust getting into these while I'm working on the drain line, I'm going to put pieces of plastic over the pipes. I'm now going to cut this pipe off that's coming out of the wall where I rough this in. If you need to know how to rough in plumbing for a bathroom, check out the video card in the top right hand corner of the screen. But I'm just going to measure an inch off the back end of this plumbing pipe. So about right there should be plenty of distance. And now I'm just going to take the Sawzall and cut square onto the pipe. Deeper that PVC pipe with a utility knife, just like so. And you definitely want to make sure you hit the inside of this pipe, because if you don't, hair can get caught on those little burrs. I'm now going to take a little bit of sandpaper and go around the pipe because there's a little bit of paint that got on it when I was painting. I'm now going to install this adapter and you can find these in my Amazon store. I'll put a link in the description below. But the first thing I want to do is prime my fittings. I'm just going to use a little bit of primer and go around them and inside of this fitting. And I'm now going to use the PVC cement and attach that fitting. I'm first going to go around the pipe and after I go around the pipe and go around the fitting we're going to push this on and give it a quarter turn as we push and then hold it tight for at least 20 seconds and release and that's all we're going to do right here until we put the vanity into place. Before I set this top on top of the vanity I'm first going to install the drain and the faucet in order to do so, I like to place something to prop this upright so I can work on everything without it laying flat onto the ground. Faucets that I'm going to be installing is made by Delta, and I'll put a link to these in the description below so you can purchase them if you want. It's just going to have your drain. It's going to have your actual faucet in here. Now, like I showed you earlier, this comes with water lines already on them, so you don't have to purchase them separate, which is really nice. And it comes with all the other parts that's going to address things like the stopper for the sink and everything else. So let's get this installed. To install the drain, I'm first going to take this off the top. And then I'm just going to unscrew this like so. And then after I unscrew it, I'm going to use what's called plumber's putty and you can also use silicone either one's fine a lot of people recommend silicone but i personally found it best to use plumber's putty but you just don't want to use too much so in order to use this i'm just going to grab a nice little ball out of here and then i'm going to roll it up and work it back and forth in my hands and get it really pliable and then just roll out a good little string of it so i make a seal around that drain after you roll some out, I'm just going to pack it right around the drain like so. And you definitely want to make sure you don't put too much on where it clogs up these holes here. And you can also go ahead and take this part out if you'd like. And now I'm going to take this nut down to where it exposes more of this threaded drain. And I'm now going to reach around the sink and place this part into the drain hole and then take this part and tighten it into that drain. After you got that threaded on all the way, we got to make sure that this part is facing the back of the countertop. And now we got to tighten up this nut around back until this dough nut goes around this hole. After that's hand tightened, I'm going to take a pair of channel locks and tighten that nut down a little more to make sure we get a good snug fit. I'm now going to install the water faucet and all I got to do is fish the water lines down through the countertop and then hold it tight where it belongs. And then I'm going to take this metal piece that it came with and it's going to go over the water lines and thread right over top of this threaded connection here. And then I'm just gonna take this tool that came with with the nut up top, and we're gonna go ahead and thread it on to that bolt. And it also has this spot thing you can turn on the side to get it extra tight. Then after it's tightened up pretty good, I'm just gonna pull this tool off of the nut that it came with. I'm first going to install the stopper into the hole before we put the back on to the faucet. I'm first going to take this piece and slide it down the back of the faucet. 
and then I'm going to take this piece and undo this nut here. And then this is going to place right down to that hole like so. And I'm going to remove this and then place this nut back over where the drain is and then tighten this down into place. But don't over tighten this. Just kind of snug it up good. And then I'm going to take this piece and it's going to slide over this black piece. And we're just going to tighten it right around here somewhere and snug it up kind of decently. And then I'm going to take the metal piece, place it over that piece, and then back over, and then tighten that onto it. And that's just going to kind of hold it into place. And then this is going to have to be adjusted. And then I'm just trying to see what works the best here. And that actually seems to be better right there. So again, once it's set, we can adjust this more later. We're now going to set the vanity into place and we got to go over the pipes that's on the floor. Got the pipes in as we lean this vanity back and then set it over those water lines. My wife, also known as the boss, did help balance the vanity as we got the pipes into the holes. All right, yep, I'm good. Oh yeah. All right, we got it in. Awesome. Now that it's setting where it belongs, I'm going to go ahead and level it into place using a four foot level. And if we take a look, it looks like setting pretty good. This side needs shimmed up just somewhat. And then we got to level up the legs. Now that we're level across the front, we need to check the sides. And if we look across the side, it looks really good too. And also check along your wall and see if you need to make any adjustments there as well. But that looks good. And now we need to cut these shims. Now that we're setting level, I'm going to find the studs across the wall here and put a couple decking screws through this vanity into the wall just to keep it secured into place. Now that I've found my studs, I'm going to pre-drill with the eighth inch drill bit and anchor with two inch decking screws. And you want to be careful you don't draw your screw in too tight because if we're setting level now, if you draw it in too tight, it could make this unlevel. It's now time to sit the top on top of the vanity. All right, we're going to keep it set and upright and try not to lay it flat if possible. Then we're going to go ahead and set it right into where it belongs. Now we're going to slide it back against the wall. All right, nothing wrong with that. With the top setting up here, we realize we need to extend the tailpipe on this sink to get below this shelf. In order to do so, I got an inch and a quarter tailpipe with the slip joint that's going to slide over this. But in order to do that, I got to have him lift up on this side of the counter as I maneuver this into place. I'm just going to tighten that down and just kind of snug it for now. And now we got to do the same thing to the other side, but also here's my water lines and they're going to go right down through this hole in the back that we cut out earlier. I'm now going to use what's called an inch and a quarter P trap and this all comes in a kit and I'll put a link to it in the description below so that way you can purchase this. Now I'm going to dry fit this onto that tailpipe. I'm just going to slide this P trap back into this adapter and go back to where it's going to meet this tailpipe and as you can see it definitely need to cut some off here because I'm going clear back into the elbow of the drain in the wall so I'm going to go ahead and slide this up to that adapter so that way it marks the distance in which you got to cut I'm going to go ahead and hold my finger there as well pull it back and I'm going to cut off probably just about an inch and a half or so not too much and that should be plenty in order to make this connection. I got the saws all with the metal blade on in order to make this cut. You can also use a coping saw. It doesn't take much to cut through this plastic, but we know we need to cut about an inch and a half off. And now I needed to burr this just like I did the drain lines using a utility knife. All right, that looks good. Now let's go install this onto the tailpipe. Now that I got the P-trap cut to length, I'm just gonna slide it back into that adapter and before I tighten that, I did have to buy this slip joint nut and washer separate because I had to add this tailpipe. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide this over that tailpipe to have it positioned. And then after I do that, I'm going to slide this over that 
tailpipe and make the connection kind of all at once here. And we're going to slide it up tight. And once that slid up tight, we're just going to tighten down all of our joints securely. And all these connections just hand tighten. And then after you get your water turned on, definitely check under your sinks to make sure there's no leak and then just adjust it accordingly. But that's good for now, so that's all there is to the drain. I'm now going to address the shark bike fitting that's going to fit onto the water lines. I'm first going to clean off the pipe really well because I did paint in the house and then some of it got on the water pipe, so we want to make sure we're super clean. So now that that's clean, the next step is to take your shark bite fitting and now this is 3 8 up top and this is half inch shark bite so it's going to secure right onto the pipe like so so all we got to do with this i'm sure you've done this before is simply slides on and pushes down and now that we're down all the way all we got to do is take this top nut off and then once that comes off we need to get the hot water side and it's going to be labeled hot on your water line that's coming off the faucet. We just simply put it on to the threaded end and then we just go ahead and tighten that up really tight like so. And then after you got it hand tightened all the way, just take a wrench and tighten it up even more until it's very secure. After you got that snugged up all the way, that's all there is to it. And then you can turn this little sleeve here to make it look nice and pretty. And always keep the water shut off for now. So that way when water turns on, water's not going to the sink. And just a quick overview, we're coming down to an inch and a quarter tailpipe and going to an inch and a quarter P-trap. And then going back to our inch and a quarter adapter that goes into the inch and a half pipe. And then our water lines hook to these 3 8 to half inch shark bite fittings. And that is all there is to it. I'm over here on the other sink working on hooking up the P-trap and I ran into a problem that's actually a pretty common problem. I'm going to show you how to address it. The drain that's in the wall is offset to the right a little bit too much, about an inch. So I'm going to show you how to bring that over. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The problem comes in right here. If we put the P-trap back here in the wall where it belongs, as you can see, we're missing this tailpipe about an inch. We're about an inch to the right, a little bit too much. So we need to bring it over to here. So in order to move this adapter from here to there, I rigged up this part that consists of a threaded end that's going to go over this adapter on the wall. And then we got two short elbows here that's going to bring it over like so. And then this is going to hook into there. And then this is going to hook onto our tailpipe fixing the problem. So I'm going to show you what this looks like after it's all glued together. Whenever gluing together fittings, it's important to try to be in a more ventilated area if possible, so I decided to do this out in a larger room. After I got it all permanently glued together here, as you can see, it shifted it over a perfect amount for the P-trap to go into. As you can see, it works just fine. So there are options in case you didn't get it perfect. These are just simple drywall anchors. I use them to install the mirrors above the vanity, and I wanted to do this before I finish up the backsplash of the top because there's gonna be some dust involved. I didn't want that on the top. And as you can see, I put those in along with the screws, and then the mirrors just hang right onto the drywall anchors and it's a very simple install whenever you use drywall anchors. In order to secure the top, I'm gonna to be using 100% silicone and all we gotta do with this is run a bead along the whole edge of the countertop underneath so that way it adheres the top to the vanity. When running the silicone around the top, I recommend using a wet rag to keep your finger damp. Whenever you use it to smooth out the caulking, it will be nice and clean and ready to go. I'm now going to install the backsplash. This vanity came with a strip of the top as the backsplash and they all install about the same. I'm going to show you how to do it. All I need is silicone, the same silicone we were just using, a little piece of pasteboard, a quick grip clamp, and then a piece of wood that's going to be the same distance from the edges countertop to the thickness of this backsplash. In other words, it's going to be used to wedge this into place. I'm going to show you up close how to put the silicone onto the backsplash. The best pattern to put the silicone onto the backsplash is circular, so that way whenever it sets up, it's going to act almost like suction cups. So something like that, and this is what's going to be securing 
the backsplash into place. Now this is going to take two people. He's on that side, I'm on this side. And there is usually a finished side and unfinished side. The unfinished side obviously gets the silicone, but we gotta be really careful not to touch the wall or the faucet here. And we're gonna slide it right back into place. Once we're about where we belong, we're gonna get it lined up to the edge. We look really good right there. Take a look, the backsplash is tight here. And if you look at it against the wall, it has a little gap here. And if you come clear to the end, it's tight against the wall. So we need to push this gap tight and that's where these tools are going to come into play. In order to close that gap it's a really simple fix. Put a piece of pasteboard against the backsplash right wherever the bump is and then take the piece of wood that you cut that's to length and we're going to push it tight against the wall and then once it's all the way back against the wall and we want to push the whole thing against the wall while we're at it. I'm going to open up this drawer and then I'm just going to take my quick grip clamp and just clamp underneath here in order to hold it tight into place. And then we gotta allow this to set up overnight. As you can see, it closed up that gap really well. And also something else you're gonna wanna do after this dries is you're gonna wanna run a bead of silicone up top here and down here so that way it makes a nice water tight area. Here we are 24 hours later. Now I'm gonna pop this loose. And as you can see, that was held into place as it set up overnight, and that looks really good. Now we just gotta caulk the top and the seam. If you'd like to see how to install this hot water tank, check out this video. It'll help you out.